Just in time for the end of the world, we've got Ryan's Tools 1.5 being released right now. There's lots of new features in Ryan's Tools 1.5. I'm really excited for this release. There's uh, so many cool things I've been working on. I uh, can't wait to show it all to you. Also, make sure you stick around to the end of this video to learn about a special pro version of Ryan's Tools. All right, let's jump right into it. First up, let's look at a new easy primitive. So there's a new type of plane called an image plane. So when we click on this, we get the option to load up an image. So I'll just grab this image here and open it up. And so ZBrush is going to import this image on a plane. Let's go into solo mode here so we see just that. And what it does is it makes every single pixel of the image its own polygon. So if we turn on the wireframe here, you can see the uh, resolution of this plane is exactly the resolution of the image and exactly the height and width uh, ratio proportions as well. So this makes it really easy to extract elements from images to turn them into 3D models. So I'm not really going to go in depth. Uh, there's a lot of different techniques you can use with like masking and extractions, all kinds of things like that to pull elements out of this if you want to create a very uh, accurate 3D model of a pin like this, for example. One of the more frustrating things about ZBrush is that it can be hard to get a quick visual read on the size of your object and what the orientation is in space, whether you're looking up or down, front or back or whatever. And one of my previous updates, I created a holodeck, which somewhat addresses that. However, I've gone a step further and created real world scale grids. So let's go ahead and click on one of these. Uh, there's different uh, units of measurement and different sizes depending on the project you're working on. So you probably want to click one that's in the ballpark of what you want to create. So uh, with this one selected, we've got this grid here that uh, gives us some scale reference, a banana and a skull. And so now if you want to model a skull, you know uh, what you're looking at, you know which way is forward, you know which way is up and down, and you get a quick visual reference of the scale. So let's look at another one of these scale grids. Um, I have several that are on the scale for jewelry. So the two inches, three centimeters, and 24 millimeter scale grids have built into them a ring sizer. So I've got 24 millimeters selected here now. And what this does is it's showing me these units here. Uh, and this is the ring size. So if we go into our gizmo, and let's just center that in the world. As we scale up the ring, you can see that this, the edge of it is hitting these different ring size lines. So if we want a ring size of seven, we just make sure that that inner circle is coming right up to the line for seven. And we've got half units as well. So right here is seven and a half, eight, and so on. So you can get a very accurate ring size this way. And then simply export in the units that you've selected for your grid. So if millimeters is your unit of grid, then that's the unit that you'd export it as for 3D printing. If you want to turn the grid off, just turn it off with the floor here. You could also turn on and off some of the individual um, planes if uh, any of them are getting in your way. Okay, now let's look at Easy Gizmo and Easy Line. Now these are two buttons that simplify and add power to existing functions in ZBrush, which is using the Gizmo and using the Transpose Line. Now as it is with uh, ZBrush, the way it's built in, um, you kind of have to do this little song and dance if you want to switch to the Gizmo. Like you might have to turn on one of these three and then also click this button, but not necessarily always because if this button was already active, then it goes right into gizmo mode. Or if you want the transpose line, you might have to click one of these and then click that to, to turn off the gizmo and turn it on to, giz uh, on to transpose line mode. As you can see, it gets cumbersome really fast. It's kind of like a, a master class in how to not do UX design. So what I did is I just simplified this I'm just going to go into Enable Customize, Control, Alt, click and drag, and just going to remove these off of here. I'm going to put Easy Gizmo and Easy Line right up here. And so the way this works, I've actually got it set up to hotkeys uh, is the way I like to use it, but um, just to make your interface more easy to use, you could take those out of there. So anyway, 
uh, with Easy Gizmo. Just one click always goes into gizmo mode. You don't have to do any weird song and dance with like turning off the gizmo or, or turning it back on. And Easy Line, it just goes right into your line. And what's really great about this is that with the Easy Line, there's actually three different modes. So if you just keep clicking on it, it'll cycle through three different modes. So if we look up here, uh, there's the rotate mode, scale mode, and move mode. But each one of these also has a different masking mode. So um, there's the, the standard mask mode for the uh, gizmo and for the transpose line, which is if you hold down control and you click and drag, it's going to create a mask that sort of uh, follows the topology of the object, more or less. Uh, and that's great. Uh, definitely the standard way is great for that. Uh, let's go into a different one here, flat area mask mode. Now this is one that's built into ZBrush, but you have to go get a special version of the transpose line to use this. And the way this one works is it sort of tries to mask uh, flat surfaces first as it spreads out. So that's pretty useful. Um, however, there is another mode to this that is only part of Ryan's tools, and that is gradient mask mode. So the way this works, just like the others, you just hold down control and click and drag. And what this does is it creates a gradient that goes from where you start to halfway up the brush. So let's say we want a gradient that goes from the crotch up to the armpit. And then I'll just finish off the rest of this mask like that. And now what we can do is we can use this uh, sort of gradient mask to do all kinds of interesting things that are harder to do uh, in other uh, methods. It's also really useful for masking down the lengths of arms or fingers, things like that. And then simply if you don't want to be in the gizmo or the transpose line, just go back to draw mode and you're back to sculpting and you can do all kinds of interesting things with that gradient mask you know, affecting uh, in a very smooth fall off. You can uh, do all kinds of interesting things. All right, now let's look at super smooth. So the, the default smooth brush in ZBrush is kind of weak sauce. Uh, you can upgrade it if you go to your light box under brushes and smooth brushes, they're smooth stronger. And it's a little bit stronger. Still, it leaves behind um, some of the, the underlying structure, especially when models are really dense. So what I made is the super smooth brush. So just go ahead and click on this. It's gonna do a little pre-calculation here. And this brush works without holding down the shift button. So you just kind of brush on your model and it just completely obliterates everything, just smooths everything right down to the bone. So I use this a lot, especially on very dense models when the smooth brush or even the smooth stronger just aren't enough to really knock back all the details that I want to smooth out. All right, now let's look at the last new feature, Smart Split. So by default in ZBrush, there's multiple ways to split an object into multiple subtools. And that's with the split subpalette here under the tool palette. And you see there's different types. There's split hidden, split group, split to parts, split unmasked points, etc., etc. And that's really complicated. It's just a lot of different buttons that all do basically the same thing. So my button makes this much simpler. I have assigned it to the hotkey Alt S. So quite simply, Smart Split splits whatever makes the most sense to split at any particular moment. So for example, uh, if you have something masked, obviously that's what you want to split off. So Alt S and it splits that off into its own separate subtool. All right, so with this subtool, we've got two cups in it, and if we hide one of them and hit Alt S, obviously it's going to split what is hidden. Now, if nothing is hidden or masked, hitting Alt S will split to separate uh, non-contiguous parts. So if there's different parts that aren't connected, uh, then those two parts will split off. So it split off the handle from the cup. And finally, if the entire object is contiguous, there's nothing hidden and nothing masked, then it will split by polygroups. So we can see we've got multiple polygroups here, Alt S, 
and we split that. Now, one great thing about this is it preserves your subdivision levels. So I can continue to go up and down through my subdivision levels on all these different parts. So if we want to split this again, we could just mask off part of this. Let's say we want to split the top and the bottom, Alt S, and simply split that off. And we've still got our subdivision levels. I'm using this button all day long, you guys. All right, thanks for watching this demo video. Please go to the link below in the description. Now, as always, Ryan's Tools is going to be free. You're always welcome to make a donation, however. But in addition to the free version of Ryan's Tools, I'm also releasing a pro version, which includes my custom gizmo. This gizmo is really great. I think it does a really awesome job of being simple, straightforward, easy to use, and just shows you what you need to use in a, in a simple, straightforward way. It's also including several custom brushes that I have made, a few favorites like the crease brush, but additionally uh, some other brushes that have never seen the light of day before. Uh, they're a secret special surprise, so you have to download the pro version in order to see what those are and to get them. Good luck, and let me know what you think in the comments.